Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session today, which is entitled Welcoming Change, Smooth Manager Transitions. Our webinar session today is really going to be focused on that. How do we navigate smooth manager transitions, which can be challenging at times? And uh, board members uh, in, in our marketplace are, are concerned about doing this in the best way possible. Uh, my name is Bill Worrell, and I'm a director here at First Service Residential. I'd like to welcome everyone to the session today and uh, appreciate your time. We will respect your time, and I'll keep an eye on the clock uh, and serve as your moderator today. So thank you once again. Uh, programming note that we are relying heavily on technology. Uh, we have excellent participation, broad swath of participation today. And so if something does go wrong, if we do have a, a slight glitch, uh, please be patient and we'll get everything back online. In addition to that, uh, we will be recording today's session. The recording is going on now. And so therefore, as we always do, we will follow on uh, and have the recording available for all attendees. Therefore, don't worry if you uh, are concerned about missing anything. Um, don't scramble too much for pens and notes. Uh, we'll, we'll provide you with the support, of course, ongoing subsequent to today's session. So again, thank you and we'll get started. We have such an excellent panel of seasoned professionals with us today. Uh, and I'm gonna just do a quick introduction of everyone. First, of course, we have Paula Allen. Paula is our Vice President of Human Resources here at First Service Residential. We also have Anthony Gragnano. Anthony is our Vice President in the High Rise Division here at First Service Residential. And Gary, Gary Hewlin, Regional Director in our HOA Division at First Service Residential as well. So thank you all so much uh, for supporting and, and your time today. Uh, as we go through our introduction today and agenda is as follows. We're gonna really walk through this methodically, this process. Uh, we will talk a lot about uh, partnering with board members. Uh, that becomes critically important in our business and in the overall success of your community. And we want to talk about the perspective a management change or a manager or property manager change can have. So we're going to welcome change. We're going to look at this from a pro positive perspective. We're going to manage the institutional knowledge. This can create anxiety for some of board members and residents alike. We're going to tackle that project today as well. Finding the right manager, critically important. People business, we need to have the right people installed with the right skills at every single community. Communicating changes, communication, communication, communication. We'll give you some good tips there. Support from your team. No board should do this alone, should have to do this alone, I should say. No board, even with a Gary, with a regional director, should have to do this alone. This takes a team of professionals to support to be successful. Of course, we'll have Q&A at the end and key takeaways. Key takeaways, we, we sincerely hope that everyone can take one or two or three things back to your community and to your board meetings uh, from today's session. And we hope that you find true value uh, from the session today. So thank you very much. And we'll just jump right on in uh, to our first section here as we move through managing institutional knowledge. So I'll provide a couple of comments here. Institutional knowledge uh, is, again, I'll, I'll just reiterate a topic that can bring some anxiety or at least some questions uh, to board members and all stakeholders, right, engaged in a manager transition. So the manager may be getting promoted, the manager may be retiring, you may wanna make a change in your manager, perhaps it's not the right fit for your community. Whatever that circumstance is, people do question and worry about, what does the manager leave with? And we wanna tackle that today. The manager is the only one that knows where this valve is. The manager is the only one that knows when the pest control company comes every, every month and we need to knock on doors and take care of different units. Maybe you have big projects going on, capital improvement projects as we refer to them here uh, at the property. Maybe you have specific vendors that you're dealing with. Of course, we're gonna oversee every vendor at every property. And then there's resident information architectural modifications that are in process, perhaps closings. And so there's a lot of information, a lot of uh, activity at every single community, every single day. And so we wanna tackle this in a way to first give, as we embark on a manager transition, 
we first want to give that peace of mind and that support to say, hey, listen, we have the information, uh, we've reviewed the information, and you're not on your own. I think that's really key here. So we can mitigate managing institutional knowledge or the loss thereof of any institutional knowledge. And so as we move through that process, um, where is your information stored? How is the information stored? And what, who controls that information? And so, uh, Anthony, I'd like you to kick us off here and walk us through some of the details and what every board, every community we believe are, should have in their community to help manage this piece of the transition. Absolutely, Bill, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is, when you look at your community, it's important to understand what is that foundation and how is it built in your community? So a lot of times we all believe, oh, our manager has so much information stored in their head. And a lot of times they do, right? So it's our responsibility to make sure that that information is clearly organized somewhere, whether that's a centralized computer system. Um, you know, now everything lives up in the cloud when you start to talk technology and being able to pull down that information. But the board and the manager need to sit and really have the understanding, how is it being built for your community? Because there's so many aspects, right? So you talk about financials, you talk about contracts, you talk about management reports or just information logs that how you're dealing with resident information. And all of that is important to be captured in a single spot so that there is the ability to easily be able to transition through when that manager is ready to take that next step. And for the worst case scenario, if you are going through manager change for a negative situation, that your information is protected as well. So, so that's where at First Service Residential, we have what's called Connect, right? It's our platform that everything lives in it. And it has full visibility access through multiple levels. So not only does our manager have full access, but the administrative assistant, the front desk associates, the, the maintenance team, everyone has the ability to see different areas. And then the board also has the ability to have viewable rights into that system. So that's really when you sit and, and look and really just think about what's important to your community and how are you gonna store it? And then working with the proper IT, um, vendors in order to make sure that you have the right securities and those types of things because now we're also dealing with personal information. Um, we all hear about data breaches and all of these things that occur and it's, it's a scary world to live in when, when you start to, as an association, are responsible for your members' information to be safeguarded. So those are all different items to just think of as you go through. And it, again, it's the conversations and know that while a lot lives in your manager's head, a lot is on paper, and it's just making sure that you know where that's at. Thank you, Anthony. And Gary, so uh, you're, as regional director, supporting this as well uh, on the front lines. Uh, can you give us some, some of your thoughts and perspectives with regard to access to information? Sure, thank you, Bill, for having me today. Uh, it's important that early on in the process, you determine what staff members have access to what information. Uh, as, as Anthony uh, relayed, it's not important that everyone have everything. Uh, some staff members just absolutely do not need it. And it's important to know who controls or who has access to that information. Uh, financial documents, uh, owner records and things, we really control, we keep a tight control on that, so not every staff member uh, would have a need to have that information. You also need to establish who has the authority to edit the information. Uh, you don't want just everybody uh, in there editing information. Some important documents could get deleted by accident or on purpose, and you just you want to limit that access. And then who's responsible for updating that information? Uh, it should be a core group of people who are administrating the, the editing of, of that information. And then finally, how is it communicated? It needs to be communicated in a timely manner. Any changes to the, to, as Anthony uh, directed, uh, in Connect, those things need to be communicated to everyone, not just staff, not just the board, but the community. If it involves a change, that is changing information, everyone needs to know it, it needs to be on a timely basis. 
Yes, agreed. And, uh, you know, so some thoughts here. Technology is key. Everybody has to have access um, to the, your information needs to be secured and stored in the same place. And what I like about our system is the board will have access to everything as well, right? So a lot of times, if it's a new board member, for example, or a board member didn't know they have login information, they're gonna feel better that, yes, I can see all of my contracts, I can see the work orders going on in the community. Board members can see everything. And then we have key information backed up in the office too, right? So some files, the right filing system, the right binder system, so that we can still go down to the office pull that project binder down and be able to reference something quickly. And let's talk a little bit more about that now, uh, Anthony, where if you have the right information stored online, and if you have uh, the, the, the right information that you need to have in the office, if you have an on-site office, uh, or in your management company's office, um, that role is very, very important on how the staff can support to help. So. Gary, if you could talk about that a little bit, you mentioned it quickly. Um, you have your maintenance team access to this, your property manager, the regional director, right? You have access to everything. So we'll just walk through a few of those details if we could. Sure. The, you know, the maintenance team doesn't always have access uh, to financial records and things like that or owner records. And so they would really need uh, full access to the maintenance side to special projects that were going on. The board would need that as well. The, uh, the regional director needs to know all of these things. They, they need to be in a position that they can, can support staff uh, in, in projects or in maintenance schedules, or if it's on the customer service side to aid front desk staff with, with questions from residents and owners as well as the board. So it's important that each staff member have the appropriate level of, of uh, opportunity and, and authorization to access those records and to be able to function in, in what, they're, what they're attempting to do. Right, and I appreciate that. So supporting that and knowing uh, so that when we meet with the board and partner with them to go through the process that they feel comfortable that you know the care center 24 7 multilingual has access to certain information in case somebody calls right on the weekend or or, or in the evening uh your accounting people and you as a regional director you're kind of pulling that whole team together right correct excellent okay so now we'll talk anthony if you could give us a couple of uh, examples here because when we're talking about information um on the next slide uh centralized information this applies to manager transition, but even something as simple as a manager taking a vacation, right? So some of these items. Absolutely, right? So when we've, we've talked about team approach, right? So, and this goes whether you're a self-managed community that I know we have some self-managed communities online or communities that are already professionally managed. It's about your team and just really where within your team has the ability to support your manager, right? So. We all get sick, we all like to take a vacation, um, and that's where a centralized information system really gives the support to be able to give your community the resources that are needed. So there's many times, so as a regional director, they're gonna have that intellectual knowledge and that intimate knowledge of what's happening at the community and, and with their support, with their manager and their boards, they know what's happening in the day to day. Then you get to a vice president type role like myself, where there's times my desk phone rings, right? And I answer the phone, how may I help you? And they're saying, I'm from this community and I have this issue. With a centralized system, I have the ability to quickly understand who that resident is, what community they're at, and really what's happening, right? So I can quickly see if they're talking about, you know, I was at a board meeting two months ago and they talked about this. I can quickly pick up and pull up the minutes to that meeting and get a real understanding what happened. Um, and then as well, I speak with my regional directors almost daily on what's happening and I'm being kept up to speed. So nothing's ever an unknown in, in what's happening within your community and or it's a quick phone call away to get that information. So that's where the more centralized the information and the more touch points you have, the ability to seamlessly operate your business 
is what we're looking to accomplish. And, and that's where having the right tools in place with the right people supporting your team, you can be at ease knowing that even if your manager leaves tomorrow, it's not this unknown of what's going to happen and that your world's going to fall apart. Yeah, very good. And the team has to be accountable, right? Gary and Anthony, the regional director is watching the manager, helping the manager, supporting the manager, because all this information has to be in the system. So that's another piece. You can have a system. I've seen great systems and they're empty. So where is that information? Who's following up on a regular basis and auditing that? Uh, you know, another, another example that comes to mind, again, if the manager takes off, uh, even just takes off for, for a week to go on vacation, or there is a transition. We used to worry about years ago, right? If there was a bill that was sitting on the desk that had a massive late fee, let's say it's a, a, an electric bill, FPNL is, is famous for this, or, uh, or, or an insurance premium. You have to turn those payments around quickly. So again, back to systems. And since we've moved to the online payable system and everything goes in there automatically and the accounting people can review and Gary can approve if he needs to, et cetera, et cetera. Just, it can't stop. The process can't stop just because the manager is out sick that day or because the manager is moving on, right? So these systems uh, are critically important. Bill, there's another component to that that Anthony touched on and it's in our system, we have the ability to put all kinds of notes. And, and, and as Anthony said, I can go into that system and in just a matter of moments, pull up any notes that uh, managers or other staff members may have put in there uh, concerning a, a problem or an issue or uh, anything that's going on. And I encourage all of the managers that I work with to put use the system, use those notes because at eight o'clock at night, I may not be able to get a hold of someone if I get a phone call and I need access to what's been going on. I need to be up to speed and that's the best place to find it. Gary, excellent point because the way you set up the process is that if the manager is for whatever reason not available, the call goes to you. And, and we saw this work fabulously, so proud of this during COVID. Somebody would call on a Friday evening. They just got home from work and they wanted to know, for example, why can't I use the fitness center or when can I use the fitness center? And we were moving quickly, right? With local regulations and rules at the property and adjusting to all of that. But those notes in the system, so they would call the care center and have the question at eight o'clock at night, even the managers at home having dinner perhaps or whatever it is. And the care center can answer that question. Yes, you're, you're, you know, you have to schedule an appointment to use the fitness center. I'll use that as, as our example today. So good point. Great point on the notes. Appreciate that. Okay. So institutional knowledge check. We are now moving on to our next section. Uh, once we feel comfortable that all the information is there and available and that uh, we have access to everything and everybody that needs to has access to the right information. And of course the board always has access to everything. Uh, we, uh, we have to find the right manager, right? So we want to partner and have a strong partnership with every board of directors. It is about your vision. It is about who's the right person with the right skill sets to, uh, to execute on that vision. And who's the right person that's gonna bring the right level of hospitality or project management experience, et cetera, to your specific community. No community is the same. And along the same lines, no property manager is the same. And so it's really about finding the right people uh, to do the right job. So uh, Gary, let you kick us off here. Uh, give us some of your thoughts on how do we put together the dream team. And from there, we're gonna bring Paula in to talk about some of the support and resources she helps to, to deliver. Sure. So when I start looking or I start the process of looking for a manager, whether it's a replacement or adding a manager on, I'm looking for some certain traits that that individual might possess. Uh, industry, how, what, how long have they been in the industry? What are, what are their skill sets as far as uh, community management goes? Uh, I look at what the community needs are. As the regional director, I've already got a relationship I hope with that board of that community and so I sort of know already what the needs are going to be what they're looking for what kind of manager do I need do I need a hands-on manager 
or is it a board that that's used to just running things and the manager just carrying out the directive? I need to know what what it is that that community needs, what the personalities of the community members are, uh, how do they stack up against the the needs and wants of that community, and, and most of all, I just need to know. Uh, beforehand, and, and Paula will talk about this, that this person is, is qualified to hold that position. And, and the processes that Paula is, is going to talk about helps me to ensure that I'm, I'm selecting the right candidate to put in front of that board and make sure that, that they do mesh well. We don't want to put someone in that, that clashes with a board. We're setting everybody up for failure. So these are some of the things that I look for in the beginning when I'm looking for a manager. And I also look within. Uh, we have a great uh, process in place called First Path, and it, it brings up uh, some of our leaders to be, if you will, within the company. And they've demonstrated a, at least a, a want or a desire to elevate themselves in, in this industry we're in. And they go through a, a pretty good process, a mentoring process before they're even allowed or even considered. So there, there are different avenues that I'm gonna search for, but I'm mostly I'm gonna lean heavily on the talent team that, that Paul has and, and making sure that we're getting the best qualified candidate that we can have. Right, exactly. And so your knowledge as a regional director, and so, as we look at the process, you have your manager on site, the first layer of support is Gary, the regional director who's plugged in at the board meetings, knows the community, really has a good sense of the right person, the right fit for the community. And then of course there's Anthony from the operations perspective, making sure that, uh, that Gary gets all of his uh, support that he needs. Uh, so Paula, uh, if you could wade into this a little bit, um, this slide and the next slide, some of the details and some of the process behind identifying the right person and the right team to do that. Absolutely. And I think that um, one of the great things that, that Gary said that we can talk a little bit more about really is, is the partnership between the support teams and here specifically uh, HR and the different functions in HR with operations or with the, the RD. So I look at, at our regional directors as the bridge to the talent acquisition team. One of the, the tools we, uh, we really like to use, we call an intake session. So the RD knows the property, knows the skill sets, knows the board, knows what they're looking for in the, the manager. Um, that we're going to help find for them. And in conversation with that information is shared and vetted and that deep understanding of what each property needs is really important for the beginning of the, of the process. Um, and then whether we're looking internally from someone who's gone through our development program, like First Path, which Gary mentioned, um, or externally, we then know um, and have a, a much better idea of who we're looking for to get into the next steps of the process. Perfect. So, and, and so Paula, if you could expand on that, uh, just a, uh, something I caught, town acquisition. So there's sure. human resources, but a town acquisition professional is a special skill set in and all of itself to support this, right? So. And, and thanks, Bill. Usually I, I explain that as in, in the house of HR, I have a lot of different rooms. And in each of those rooms, there's a skill set. So talent acquisition or recruiting is one and HR operations, employee relations, training, development, safety, communication. So lots of different roles held by um, certified, my certified team um, are part of the support team for the managers and our, our operations partners. Excellent. I think that that, um, you know, when you look at that talent acquisition, that's what they do all day. And for us, your team is constantly screening and looking for the right professionals, both externally, and Gary mentioned the talent development program, 
your team is also running through the training and development side, right? The talent development program to give folks uh, the opportunity to, to grow. Um, that, that partnership is incredibly important within my team to support uh, the business and to support finding the, the manager because there's, there's always a, a balance of building what we call pipeline internally or externally. Um, and how we do that is a little bit different if we're looking externally and, and internally, but um, as we support and develop and train our teams as they go through their, their careers, uh, everyone needs uh, to communicate. Right, exactly. And it, at this moment, you know, I saw a question come through. Um, and Paula, since we're on this topic, um, the board member asked to just briefly address when uh, you need to terminate a manager. So if you are going through that process at a community, that definitely begins with, and, and so really the team that's on the screen, right? It's a sensitive process. Maybe it's a transition, maybe it's not a termination. I'm not sure of the details, but human resources will support that process. And of course, Gary will support that process. And Anthony is part of it as well. So the point here is, is that we don't want a board to feel like they're in a position where they need to go down and have an uncomfortable conversation with a manager in the clubhouse or in the office or to, to feel the need to have to approach that. Uh, let us do the work for you, right? That's our job. You'll communicate those, that information to us and, and Paula has a team. You know, two things are happening at the same time, right, Paula? You have the human resource side and you also have the talent acquisition side going at the same time. Absolutely. Excellent. Okay, so uh, finding the right manager, um, and and let's talk a little bit more about training here and the mentorship programs. So, just to start us off, Paula, with this, a lot of times what we find, and Anthony, I'd love for you to jump in as well as part of the conversation here. We'll find a great manager and a great fit. He or she really, the board is engaged. They connected during the interview process. They seem to really have good chemistry and a lot of great skills, but not every manager is all things to everybody, right? Not every manager is lead AP certified. Not every manager is a CPA. Not every manager is, some are really strong in hospitality skills, for example. Others are really strong in preventative maintenance programming, for example. So another, another, Another group in your HR house, right, Paula, is the training and development team. If you could walk us through some of the tools and what that looks like. Sure. From a training perspective, we mentioned earlier, and I think it was Anthony mentioned, our Connect system. So we have subject matter experts and, and training in our 30, 60, 90 day onboarding program where we get new managers up to speed on systems. Um, um, and that I consider technical training. When we look at development, like first path, and you're um, and we're looking for those that have joined the company who want to become a property manager, I we look at that as development. But then we look at on a yearly basis, how do you build skill set? Um, how do you build capability? And how do you continue to keep our managers up to date in their learning process around the legal side of things, for example, and being responsible for a large property and a large team. So leadership, how to do a performance uh, appraisal, for example, how to have tough conversations um, as, as another example. So we have a, a very robust plan around that and different pieces to choose to um, handle the, the, the different learning objectives that each manager might have, depending on where they are in their career um, and where, what they're responsible for from a, a, a property um, size, for, for example. Online courses, I think everyone's familiar with, with online. That's a, a webinar, a lot of times self-driven, which um, we have a, a very deep um, uh, curriculum there, but we've also gone virtual, right? And, and um, we have needed to do that like a lot of, of companies had. And virtual, I, I would consider sometimes the hands-on training because in a virtual environment, 
we have the ability to actually run a complete training program, have breakout sessions, have interactions, have learning, have sharing. Um, and so we have uh, moved a lot of our training to virtual um, as well. And then Bill, I guess the, the last bullet point we have around mentorship programs. Mentorship programs um, develop on their own. Um, those are the informal, those are your subject matter experts that people know um, they can go to, um, those that have deep experience in, in a subject. Um, and not, not always your leader, but someone who um, has a reputation in, in the company to be a go-to. And then you have formal programs, and as part of our first path, we do have a formal mentorship program. Um, and when I talk about formal, I look at it more as there are objectives of a, of a mentorship program, and you're matched with somebody that will um, kind of help shore up some of, uh, of the things from your development that you might be looking for. Right, the mentorship program is so, I, it's one of my favorites. Uh, the, the manager has someone to, to reach out to, and they are working with and dealing with real life situations. It's one thing to get a CAM license, right? That doesn't uh, yeah. 100% support. And Anthony, I know that, you know, one of the things you were talking about uh, to us earlier offline was, when you find the right fit and you find the right manager and the board says to you, we really like this person. We really want to hire this person. We really want to, we really want to work with this person, but you know what? This one piece is missing and we're able to say, well, we can train for that depending on what it is, of course. Right. Give us some of your perspectives from a vice president perspective. Absolutely, Bill. And, you know, th through this entire conversation, it it's when we talk about finding the right manager, so much of that is also the personality that needs to fit your community, right? So not everyone's going to be perfect or excel in every area of what it takes to be a property manager, right? Because we're really a jack of all trades. They, they, property manager has to understand HR, has to understand training, has to understand accounting, all these different areas. And we know that it's somewhat unrealistic that you're ever going to find the exact unicorn that's out there to fit every specific job function of property management. But with that comes the support and training, right? So that's where this, this ongoing onboarding and training that needs to continue is to develop those skills. So I, ideally, right, that's why we have our HR partners. That's why we have our accounting partners. And that's why we have the regional director. Right. So it's partnering your community with the right regional director to fill in those gaps as well as the vice president. Right. So but within our team, the expertise is there and it's just knowing how to tap into that resource and, and being able to support because, you know, I'm pretty good at accounting. Two plus two is four. But, you know, when you get into general ledgers and, and what that may all look like, you want to know what? I'm picking up the phone and talking to our accounting experts that can come out to the field, deal specifically with our manager, be able to deal with the board members and give that resource right to the front line. And then our ongoing trainings, right? So our accounting team does trainings once a month. Our, um, our lead uh, certified engineers do trainings every month. Our QA inspections, they do trainings every month. So all of this ties into just that ongoing support. And then that's where the regional director and the VP has to identify, along with the board, where are some of those shortcomings, right? So where do we see the manager might just need that skill honed in a little bit more? And that's where we can either assign certain courses, do some one-on-ones, um, deal directly with the different departments and make sure your CAM is supported all the way through. And then again, that's where that RDVP we help fill in those gaps because we get it, right? I've been with First Service now 14 years. You know, I, I've seen a little bit more than a manager that might just be on site for four years with the company. But that's where we partner with each other and make sure that the board is getting that full holistic approach. Right. So it's, you know, it's really all the time because it, if, if you've identified the right manager and one of the board members asked earlier, what if it's uh, a change we want to make? So a termination or a transition out, whatever that is, um, you're doing it during the hiring process. You're assessing that right up front with the board. And sometimes it even helps to mitigate a change in manager. You may have a community that's now going to go into a capital improvement project. And 
well, they've never done a capital improvement. Let's send them through our course on that, um, you know, project management. So that's also very important. And so I think that the ongoing training and development, I think the last note I'm going to make on this uh, is that one of the hidden uh, behind the scenes benefits here and something where we talk a lot about, and I think every organization should do, the best people in the market seek this out. The best people, the best professionals are always looking to grow and develop and they wanna have access to the resources and the support and the training. And so it's beautiful that all of this is in Paula's house, right? Because and a robust training and development programming will support the talent acquisition team all in that house. So just another note there to, to consider uh, as you're looking at uh, making that change with the manager. Okay, so uh, all important communication. We've now talked about access to all of your important information and uh, having that secure and making sure the whole team is involved. We now expand the team. It was asked, uh, I saw a note come through, what is the, the regional director's involvement? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that to make sure we address that with Gary. Uh, and then everything comes together now with communication. So the communication really does begin most of the time. You have your regional director's cell phone number and it's between the regional director and the board. And it couldn't be Gary, right? Gary going to the board saying, hey, listen, I think we may need to make a change over here. I'm seeing some gaps. Or it could be the board calling Gary on his cell phone to say, I don't wanna have this conversation, but you know, my board, we've been talking. Maybe we need to look at some different options. So Gary, I'll let you start us off there, but from that initial communication, that open line has to be key and then expanded to uh, the rest of the membership. And I see you're on mute here for a moment. So when you jump in on that, please just kind of give us some of your really authentic thoughts and your experiences you've done these before. Yes, sir. So the, the most important part of this, you said at the very beginning of the program, communication, communication, communication. And that is where everything lies. Uh, if there is a change requested by the board, there is a lot of communication that has to go on there. If there is a change due to that person maybe being promoted or, or leaving the industry, again, there is a lot of communication. And so it is important that as soon as possible, Communication goes out to the residents, to the board members, to all affected parties, even your vendors. They're, they're in this as well. Our, our business partners need to know of these changes as well. And the earlier, the quicker you get it out, it sort of shuts that rumor mill down as to why, what, when, where, and how. Uh, you don't have a, a lot of gossiping going on. And so you, you make that communication out early and quickly. The second thing is, is for the regional director to introduce that new manager. Now you've made a change, it's time to introduce the new manager that's coming in. Uh, you're gonna already have been put this person in front of the board to make sure that it's gonna be a fit there and that they, they approve of it. But now then you've gotta introduce it to the community. Uh, you've got to, we're, we're doing more virtual introductions these days, but where there is an ability to do a meet and greet, that is always good. It gets the, it gets the residents involved. They, they can put a face with the name. And it's most important to make sure that you communicate how they can get in touch with this manager. Uh, you can't wait three weeks into the process to send out their email or their their telephone number, right off the bat, they need to know how they can get in touch with this manager. And, and it's important then, uh, the next steps is to clarify the role of that manager. What is his responsibility? Is he just basically carrying out the directives of the board? Or is it a board that expects that manager to be hands-on doing everything possible in that community? So again, communication is, is the most uh, important part of this process so that everyone knows who's responsible, what their role is, and what's going on. 
Uh, excellent points. I want to bring, I want to loop Anthony in as well here, but uh, just to reiterate, the best transition in communication is going to happen with uh, partnership with our board, right, Gary? And the board and you are talking and emailing all the time because it isn't just about the transition. It goes back to who's the right fit and really getting that feedback. What would you like to see happen? We have these goals for the next 12 months. This is our vision as dictated by the board. This is what we need. All of that is communication. Um, Anthony, back to now we've made the change and give us some of your thoughts as well on communication to the residents of the community. Absolutely. And, and this is where I've always said throughout the years, we have to control the narrative of the community, right? Because the moment you have a manager change, the rumor mill is going to start. Did the manager get fired? Did the manager get promoted? Was the manager stealing? What happened? And everyone wants to know the why. Um, so if it's a positive, let's celebrate your manager, right? Like don't be afraid to congratulate them and say, hey, this is what's happening, and then explain the process, right? So, hey, Joe's moving on, he got a new position, but guess what, here's our next process. We're gonna be interviewing, we're gonna do this, and lay out what's gonna happen. Because the more people understand the unknown, the easier it's gonna be. And then on the flip side, right? So if it had to be a termination, unfortunately, sometimes boards need to terminate a manager, right? Um, that's where you definitely need to be partnering with your HR professional, if you're with a management team, and or your attorneys or representatives that are managing your HR side, because a lot of times when it comes to an HR issue, reasons why you'd be terminating somebody, you can't fly that on a flagpole outside of your community and say, hey, we fired the manager because of this, right? Because that just opens up a whole nother list of legal issues as an employer for, for, for the community. So it's about managing risk and, and still being truthful enough with your um, membership, but still protecting the business, right? Because I get it, sometimes it's easier just to say, hey, this is what happened. But in the same breath, that can be opening up the liability. So there needs to be definitely board meeting communications, you know, when you're in person, and then obviously what that written communication looks like out as well. And then again, once that transition occurs, it's about just laying out the process. Because once people know, hey, this is what's happening, here's step one, here's step two, and then here's the onboarding, and, and making sure that your board is one cohesive voice, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's a challenge because we all know there's boards that are three-member boards, five-member boards, nine-member boards. It, 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 you, you have the run of the gamut. Um, but it's important that once a decision's made, that you are communicating as much as possible as one voice. Because if the board is in a cohesive harmony moving forward, the community is gonna follow suit with that, right? So, so communicating that out and, and being as one voice, and then don't forget your current associates. You don't realize how much um, anxiety can be put on your current associates, which then that starts the rumor mill as well, because now you have your front desk person or your maintenance guy that innocently says something to a unit owner, and then the unit owner takes it and spins it to a different direction. So making sure you're holding those staff meetings, whether that's a board member or if you're with a professional management company, that should be the regional director or the vice president or the human resource team partnering with them to be able to talk through what are some of those challenges and what are some of the anxieties uh, affecting everyone. And then be open, right? You have to listen. And, and then just, again, back to that plan and back to the communication. Excellent points, Anthony. So again, to highlight, anticipate questions from the membership and the staff. Absolutely. Make sure that we have the answers to the questions of what can we say and what can't we say. In some situations, risk mitigation, that is key. Um, excellent points. I think also uh, when you're looking at communicating to the residents, you wanna get that person once they're selected uh, he or she in front of the membership, whether it's on a session like this, right? Or one day we'll go back to in-person, more in-person board meetings, uh, we all hope. Um, and, and really, you know, because the manager deserves to listen to the community too and to learn the personalities and to learn about the people. Um, but finally, whatever you're communicating at the end, I think it's always important to close, whether it's a meeting or a written communication, 
close with the future in mind, close with positive impact. This is exciting, we have an opportunity, we're moving forward, this is what we're gonna accomplish, because that's all what we all really want at the end of the day is success for the community. Uh, so some good, gr great information there on the communication team, thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna go into module four now, which is really support from the team. So we've talked a little bit about the initial group which is on this call. Uh, again, to highlight, just so for illustration purposes, and you may have a meeting like this for board members with your team as you're working on this. And again, this is supporting the communication. But a solid team to back up the transition. We talked about what it takes to identify the right person and then what it takes to communicate effectively, but it doesn't stop there. Now the manager is installed and Gary's gonna be right there with them, making sure that they get their feet wet and they get in integrated into the community and that they're learning all those nuances and that they're able to access all that information we talked about in the beginning uh, and really be brought up to speed as quickly as possible. Uh, so Anthony, um, you're the vice president, you're overseeing and ensuring your team has every single resource. It could be our security expert, right, with Tim. Uh, just you know, give us some of your thoughts and, uh, around that support team that needs to be there. So again, at, at, as a board, it, it's a challenge, right? You're, you're in your building and you have your, um, your units and your, your unit members and your job is to be running that business. And that's where when you build the right team around you and it starts with your property manager, but then it goes, what's that support outside of that? Because as this whole conversation has been, Yes, it's about your manager, but it's about managing that change. And that all comes with what that team support is that's going to help the building through these changes. So with, with First Service, I mean, you talk about the 360 support that we offer. And it's really just the resources that are there to be able to support a board that no matter what you're going through, and again, it goes back to that manager that's in that seat isn't going to know everything. They just need to know how to pull on the right resources to get it to the board. Um, and that's where my job, along with the regional director, is always pulling in those resources, right? So you have your manager in your chair dealing with the day-to-day -day operations. Your regional director is in direct contact with the board and, and with the manager and knowing intimately what's happening. And then my regional directors are reaching out to me saying, hey, we have this going on at this property. And I'm tying in all the different pieces and resources within the organization that, you know, just this morning I was on a phone call with a, a few of my RDs and we had several people from our front desk division chimed in. We had talent acquisition that was on the call and it's addressing all the individual needs for the properties where everyone's being supported. And, you know, there, it's a quick phone call to say, hey, this is what I need. So. When you look at it holistically and then building that business plan around where you're headed is important as a board to be able to say this is the next step. And that's where all of these resources will just be able to pull in and then again just back down to communication, not being afraid to pick up the phone and, and our jobs to listen and read the unspoken vibes that sort of happen at board meetings or undertone of emails or what may may occur it's to really be able to orchestrate um, fr from our side what needs to be done we're gonna go into that 360 in a minute but Anthony Gary maybe you want to chime in here too uh, it just occurred to me that one of the unsung heroes here are the team administrative support folks right and a lot of a lot of folks don't always see them um, but uh, they're behind the scenes also providing all those details, the access to the system, right? My business cards, those different types of things. So even the administrative support behind you guys, I think is just uh, very, very, an unsung hero and very special in the process. Bill, and one thing that Anthony just alluded to, uh, knowing when to pull the trigger. You know, if, if I don't know, I'm not going to try to convince my manager that I don't know, but we're gonna reach out and get some of that uh, expert subject matter folks to help us solve this problem. There's no need in, in my, my manager and myself and even my vice president 
burning up brain cells if it's something that we just absolutely don't understand. And so it's, it's knowing when to pull those folks in and, and not be afraid to ask for help. Well, great point, Gary, right? So we have quality assurance directors that, can, that, are gonna, that have already done an inspection of the property. They know the physical plant. Uh, backwards and forwards, they can help you and the man and the maintenance team if there's a gap, for example. Um, the financial statement has to be delivered. Whether the manager's there or not, the board has to get their financial statement. And they're going to have a question. The treasurer's going to say, hey, listen, here we are. We're getting close to budget time. Well, most of our budgets are done now, of course, but if I'm in September, we're getting close to budget time and we need to work through some of these things. That, I think, is a great point, Gary, very insightful, because it goes back to the world doesn't stop in a manager transition. We need to move forward, and all of these professionals that we're talking about. So, Al, let's jump to the next slide on that and really highlight that. So, to give everyone a visual um, on, on what we're really talking about here, you see the org chart, uh, really, on the right end of your screen with Gary and, and Paul and Anthony. Uh, but there are other folks in here. You do have compliance and, and safety uh, folks, all of that on in Paula's house, along with training and recruiting and support. That's going to continue to happen for all of your staff. Anthony made the comment earlier to keep the staff supported and comfortable as well through the process. You have to have your care center. Somebody's got to pick up the phone in the middle of the night. Somebody's got to answer the questions. Somebody's going to have a question, a resident, about their architectural modification or perhaps, unfortunately, a late fee. Uh, so we have to have answers for all of those folks, and none of this can stop uh, without the manager, uh, with, without the manager being on site. Excuse me. <clears throat> Technology is the key to everything, um, and you have to have the right systems and team to do that as well. So, <clears throat> excuse me, as I lose my voice, We'll move into Q&A for the team. Well, while you're waiting on that, Bill, it all comes back to just one basic premise, building relationships, whether it's with our managers, whether it's with our boards, whether it's with our community vendors, it's all about building relationships. Now, Gary, you're exactly right. And I think what's important there is to have the relationships with you guys. It has to be not just the manager, right? It's gotta be the rest of the team. Um, as well, a programming note, a couple of questions have come through. We are gonna log those questions. Some of them we won't uh, address online today for the entire group. Some of them are a little bit more specific. Uh, so what we're gonna do um, is make sure we get those over to the right subject matter expert. And if you submitted your question online and it isn't addressed now, Rest assured, we will reach out to you and make sure you get the answer uh, to, the, uh, to those questions. One of the questions we have today is, uh, we touched on this a little bit, our community is going through the 558 process. How do we transition our manager in the middle of that process? And that's, that's, a, that's an excellent question. I see that all the time. If you need to make a change in a manager or a management company, well, I have this big project going on or I've just gone through a developer turnover. Uh, so Anthony, can you kick us off on that? Big projects, 558 means capital improvement, whether that's a new development or an older building, right? Absolutely, and, and you know, we typically say 558 and it's the brand new buildings that are just going through developer control, but it's still the buildings that are going through general capital improvement projects, like you said. And it's really at the end of the day, 99.9% .9 of the buildings are the same. Right, they, the, the structure is the structure and they're all built pretty much the same. So, and the process is, is all pretty much the same. So what needs to occur is that intellectual knowledge and, and that goes back to phase one right at the beginning of this conversation about how is the information being captured and stored so that you're not losing it and that it isn't all just sitting in someone's head. But that process can easily be, don't be afraid or captured into uh, or pigeonholed into one area because you feel that you're going to fall apart because your manager is the only one holding it together. We'll get through it, right? Uh, again, wh whether it's, it's first service residential 
or, or you just changing your manager, you're going to be able to get through it. And, and that's the main item is just make sure you have that piece number one in place, that firm foundation, where is that information being stored? How is it being captured? And that the board is comfortable with knowing where, it, where it's at. Because wherever it's stored, whether it's in First Service Connect or whether it's in a, um, a private server on your community site, or some type of other third party software, you're, you own that information. So that's gonna live with the community no matter what. So whether it's a data export or anything along those lines, you own that information. So never be afraid that it's stuck somewhere. Um, and that's just where that transparency, as, you, as times are good, you need to just be looking to make sure, hey, is my house in order and is my foundation strong? So that if this does come up, I know this is a firm baseline for us. Right, thank you, Anthony. And just a you know, good note on that. Some of the other questions that came through, we were talking a lot about First Service Residential Connect. It's our system, it's what we build, it's what we're most comfortable with. Of course, there are other systems out there, but never worry about that. You're right, Anthony. The board needs to know and be supported that it is your information at the end of the day, and you, of course, are entitled to all of that. Another question we get quite often and so, Gary, I'll start with you. I think um, all, all of this is going to end up in, in Paula's team as well. Uh, Anthony, you're, I'm sure, going to have – we've seen this a lot, and we do board alignment sessions, what we call board alignment sessions. Absolutely. So in this question, we've seen this before. So uh, I won't say the lady's name. The board member asks, so don't feel like you're alone in this. How do you handle a board that is not – collaborative. So a board in our terms, in our language, that is not aligned. Uh, so we're going to have different board members with different opinions on what the perfect manager, what that dream team looks like, right? Gary, your thoughts? Uh, Anthony? Well, if, if and when we find that board that uh, everyone agrees on every subject matter, then I want to go manage there because it, it will make life so much easier. That's you will have that, Gary. That just doesn't happen everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going to have difference of opinions on, on matters, and especially when it comes to spending money, uh, the association's money, and how it should be spent. And again, building those relationships with each board member, with the manager, and then collaboratively working with them to hopefully pull them all together into the same direction is the only way that, that you'll ever get something like that accomplished. Otherwise, you've got a faction that, that pulls against the other, and it makes it hard for that manager then. He's sort of caught in the middle of refereeing, or, or you know, we don't choose sides, and so therefore he's, he's caught in the middle. And, and it does make a lot of times for an unpleasant work experience, but our job is to to help pull them all into the same direction and get the best outcome that we can. Uh, it, it, it might not always be perfect, but it'll be the best that we can work through. Anthony, your thoughts? Absolutely. And, and you know, this is, I, I always love this, this part of my job, right? Because there's one lucky thing when you have a support team where, where like first service is board members live in their homes. You then have a manager that's living within the four walls where, where, where the board members live, right? So that manager can't really have those true difficult conversations when you're talking about board dysfunction or board non-alignment, right? So that's where my regional director and even myself is, is that body to come in and have those tougher conversations. Really sitting the board down and saying, hey, where's our alignment? Where are we going? And, and it's our role to then sort of listen to everyone, right? So the most important part of communication is listening, right? Um, listening and then helping maneuver through some of those rough waters that occur. Um, and we can have those difficult conversations because guess what? I get to leave tomorrow, right? So I get to walk out of that meeting and I don't have to show up in the morning as your manager does back in your home where now we just had a little bit of a disagreement, right? So, so that's where when you build this team approach, it's okay if we have a disagreement. It's okay that we had a tough conversation. It allows myself or my regional director to then have a day or two for the dust to settle, 
emotions to calm down some, and then we revisit that conversation. And again, you're not gonna win every board member, right? We, we deal with difficult boards. Um, not everyone's always gonna be um, on that same page, but it's just how we lead our boards with best practices because we've seen it, right? So being, being with such a vast uh, portfolio, we've seen multiple things throughout the years and how to manage it and what the nuances might be. And we're just here to give some guidance, right? So it, it, it comes down to communication, planning. And again, you're never gonna have a perfect board, like Gary said, uh, but it, it's the goal of really just developing and running it more like a business. And then as the membership starts to see that, once board members realize, hey, we're actually moving forward and we're dealing in a, in a much more sophisticated manner, and, and the community sees that, hey, there's a plan and we have a vision, it starts to ease up. And, and it, it takes time. It's not, a, it's not a three month, it's not a six month, it's at least a year, two year process for people to really start to see where, where that's headed. And, and I, I would offer as well the, the depth of resources for information uh, when you're building those great relationships to answer the, the questions because sometimes people, you know, a board might not agree because everyone might have different information. They may be starting from a different place. So our ability and, and depth of, of resources from a team approach whether it's uh, IT security to how do you, you know, find a manager to how do you do a special assessment, um, that I think as well is, is important. And since we spend a good amount of time today around the team approach, um, that piece is important when having those conversations, that information. Absolutely, and you, you all touched on the second portion of this particular board member's question, we'll spend another couple minutes on this because uh, it's not unusual. Uh, but the second part is how do we present a united front in front of the community? And I can feel that every day we work on that. A board wants to be viewed as an effective board, uh, as a board that is on the same page, that is that respects each other, that respects each other's differences. And by the way, I would take advantage of those differences. There's something good out of every single comment uh, that's made respectfully, of course, um, so that you end up a, on a comfort level. This is what we have consensus around, and that's where we're going. And that's what you want to approach the board meeting with. The other thing that, in, you know, a lot of, a lot of really great professionals in this business for a board to think about this as well in these terms it's about what's right for your community but remember the best professionals are also thinking about what's right for them and for their career and so when we talk about board alignment we talk about clear complete and mutual understanding we talk about of course we have to bring that with gary and anthony to paula's team so that we have a com clear, complete, mutual understanding of the pool of candidates that's gonna work to be interviewed at this property. We can't just throw bodies out there. So that's the clear, clear complete, complete, mutual understanding. Then once you go through the process and you've made a decision, you select a manager, it's celebration time. We all can't wait for the future. The manager has to have a, that same understanding of your vision and direction. And all of this then organically, I find the board just kind of comes together. It just happens naturally. It just happens organically. Again, there will still be differences and we will embrace those differences, but you will come together in substance and, and you respect each other's opinions. You'll make your decisions and, and uh, move the community forward, right? So good information there. We cannot leave this session. One last question we'll have time for. Again, there's just a couple out there uh, as they come in, uh, folks. We'll make sure we get those to you. Uh, but we cannot wrap this session up with at least talking about COVID, right? Uh, it's been a lot of work this year. Um, it's been a lot of uh, practices and procedures that have been developed. So we've started new clients, new communities during the pandemic. We've done manager transitions during the pandemic. Paul, I think I'd like to start with you on this. As a, as a senior member of our COVID-19 task force, helping to develop and support uh, the protocols necessarily to keep our staff safe, our associates safe, and our clients safe. Uh, tell us a little bit about your 
your experiences and takeaways with regard to making a transition in the middle of a pandemic as well? I think a, a number of times today we've talked about communication or communication, communication, and communication. And that's been key um, during COVID because you have to, you had to be able to, to pivot, to take information, to put it together, to communicate it. Um, and at the same time, keep a business running, right? Keep the, the property running and keep people comfortable. So our ability to develop protocols and whether there are safety protocols for associates and, and residents or they were in response to the different business needs as we move through the, the different phases of COVID. Um, between, again, our depth of resources and subject matter expertise, we were able to move uh, through that communication quickly. Uh, we were able to make those changes when needed and still um, move managers through and, and get new managers on site where, where a property um, was maybe in the middle of interviewing, for example, for, for a manager. So to continue to interview and vet those candidates from a virtual perspective and not miss a step when it came to their 30, 60, 90 onboarding plan, um, I think we, uh, we did a, a good job in, in doing that. I concur. Uh, Anthony, any, any COVID uh, insights as well? You know, of course, we hope this is going to be gone tomorrow with a vaccine, but I guess I would be living in a fantasy land, right? So we're, we're, we're stuck with this for a little while. We're stuck with it for a little while, but don't, don't let it hinder your next steps, right? We, we, we've had to adapt. Um, I'll tell you, you know, being on some of the initial uh, task force items with COVID and, and sort of our operating procedures and what was going to come, you know, we, we had, we were lucky enough to wear first service. We had the experience a little bit, right? Because we saw it over in San Francisco and we saw it in New York. And then it, it, before it came to South Florida, we were already a few steps ahead because we were dealing with this across the nation already, right? So, um, Granted, it, it, it's don't be afraid. It, it comes down to communication and what are the needs. And again, like you've said, we've started communities up during this time. Um, we've changed managers during this time. And it's just now learning how to deal with the small nuances that, and changes that have to be into effect in order to just manage the day-to-day -day property. Um, but again, it's also making sure that as the man, as the board members within the within the building have the right support. And if you're not getting that today, please pick up the phone, have the conversation, because you shouldn't be on your own trying to deal with this massive undertaking that we've called, we've all come to know as COVID nineteen. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, and so you know, I think that's that's great. If you go through our pillars today welcoming the change, managing institutional knowledge, finding the right fit, identifying the right person, uh, communicating and support from the team. All of this can happen and has happened during the pandemic, but you have to have the resources and the infrastructure and the team in place to be successful doing that. So that's excellent. Um, okay, we are just about wrapping up out of time. Um, Eleanor, we'll move on to um, the conclusion here, these are the key takeaways. I hope everyone, first of all, I saw a lot, so many positive comments online here. Thank you all very much for your time on that. Uh, second of all, a few folks were jumped in a little bit late. Yes, absolutely, we will have the recording for you. Um, but really, we wanna embrace change. We wanna embrace, we know this is gonna happen. You have to anticipate it, it will happen. You will have a manager change. And maybe you can take some of these best practices, not maybe, for sure to managing change with a maintenance supervisor or concierge or any other of the staff as well. So we hope that everyone had um, a good experience today and, was, and you're able to take a few things back to your community that will help and support uh, with your board. We know change is inevitable. We want to be proactive and we want to be ahead of it. And so as well, I have to, uh, a couple of uh, comments here about first service residential. Just in a nutshell, 
Um, we have done this before. Uh, we're so proud to manage over 8,000 communities, and that's really wonderful because, again, Anthony mentioned it coast to coast. We get to share those experiences and those best practices. That's close to 40,000 board members we get to serve and receive feedback from. Uh, so a lot of what you've heard today is based on that experience. You can probably tell we've made a couple of mistakes in the past. I can tell you I have, and we've learned from those. So hopefully uh, you won't have to go through that same process. And then it is about our mission to think about delivering exceptional service and solutions that enhance the value of every property and the lifestyle of every resident in the community. It is about the manager, your frontline right-hand person, delivering that lifestyle, supporting your residents, can't, ex can't express the importance enough of having the right team and the right support to make sure that happens. Every community wants their values to enhance and every community wants their lifestyles to enhance as well. So with that, I wanna thank everybody again. Uh, this email on the screen, if you think of something after the session today, please feel free, shoot us an email. Uh, we'll make sure we get the right person involved and get you an answer back, clientexperience.fl at fsresidential.com. Um, and so please feel free to communicate with, uh, with us on that. I don't do this often, but um, Eleanor Janice behind the scenes over there managing the session today. Again, standing ovation, bravo. You all nailed it. The only thing that went wrong was me losing my voice for a couple of seconds, but you guys got the technology and the support. Thank you so much. Um, Paula, Gary, Anthony, excellent support, resources. Uh, really, really appreciate your time and energy and passion around this topic because it's so important for every community and, and in our business as a whole. So again, thank you all. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time and we look forward to following up with a couple of the items that we didn't get to address today. So thank you all once again. Have a great Thursday and a great weekend, everyone.